This is Top 30. Coming up, the things that scare Americans most about their finances. We break down the many reasons people procrastinate and patients with spinal cord injuries regain the ability to walk. Hello and welcome to the show. I'm Kristen Smith and here are 30 things you need to know right now. In a recent survey by Wallet Hub, less than half of Americans were familiar with their credit card perks. The website Top Cashback says one of the best so-called secondary benefits is extended warranty protection. The policies often extend factory warranty to two years. Some cards offer cell phone insurance as a free benefit. All you have to do is pay your monthly bill on the card. Deductibles are as low as 25 bucks. Think of concierge service as a personal assistant. It can be used to book everything from concert tickets to dinner reservations. Every car rental agency tries to sell you insurance, but many cards offer it as a free perk. Some cards have return protection. It usually allows returns up to 90 days after a purchase if the retailer doesn't. Many cards from American Express, Chase, Bank of America, and Discover also give you free access to your credit score. Your card's secondary benefits can save you money, but you have to read that fine print to take advantage of them. Well, as the saying goes, why do today what you can put off until tomorrow? Procrastination knows no age, gender, or color. Alexander Rosenthal, a clinical psychologist at the Karolinska Institute in Sweden, suggests the four reasons people procrastinate in a Time Magazine article. The first is value. People procrastinate because of the lack of value they associate with the task. The second, expectancy. People expect they aren't going to achieve the value they're trying to achieve. The third is time. People procrastinate because the value is too far from them in terms of time. And the the last is impulsivity. You could just be a very impulsive person. So how do you stop? Rosenthal suggests you have to know why you're procrastinating first. If time is the issue, work at a time when you know you'll naturally be more productive. Big tasks can be overwhelming. If this is your problem, break everything into smaller jobs. It's also very easy to get distracted. Look around to eliminate any notifications or noise. Also, make sure you know this is not the time to multitask. So now there's no need to put off until tomorrow what you can do today. Let's go to Danielle Knox from Fox 35 Orlando. She has what you need to know today. So Danielle, this is such an important topic. I hear there's a new study about college students and mental health. Well, Kristen, more and more college students are seeking treatment for mental health concerns. According to researchers at the University of Texas at San Antonio, treatment for anxiety rose by 6% for college students between 2009 and 2015. While researchers say it appears more students are seeking help because more are suffering from mental health problems, and a new study has found breathing through your nose can actually boost your memory. Scientists in Sweden asked 24 participants between 19 and 25 to recall familiar and unfamiliar smells by breathing solely through their noses and then solely through their mouths. Well, they were more than twice as likely to remember a scent if they breathed through their noses. Researchers say this is because our noses improve the transfer of events into the long-term memory and we are more likely to remember an event if we see it while we are inhaling through our noses. All right, stop for a minute. Take a deep breath. If you've had a rough week and you're hoping a few drinks tonight will help you forget, researchers at Brown University say alcohol does have an effect on a specific gene that can make your brain forget the bad memories and only remember the good ones. The study found one glass of wine can change the pathway for an hour. Three drinks can give you 24 hours of relief. But here's the thing, guys, the change is only temporary. And this study is not to encourage binge drinking, but it is to help researchers understand alcohol addiction and new treatments. And that's what you need to know. Kristen, let's go back to you now. All right, great reporting as always. Thanks, Danielle. Did you know Americans are drinking more than ever before, especially in certain cities? The website 24-7 Wall Street reviewed data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics to figure out the most hard-drinking towns in the U.S. based on spending. Four out of the top five were located in the West. Anchorage, Alaska is number five, despite the fact that average income dropped about eight grand in one year. Coming in at number four, Boston was the only city from the Northeast to crack the top five. Average spending jumped $188 in just one year to $823.
San Francisco fell to third place with an average of $875. It took the top spot the year before. Seattle took second place. Spending on spirits went up more than a quarter to an average of $986. Coming in at number one is San Diego. The average resident spent over $1,100 on booze. Compare that to just $997 on fruits and veggies. Now that's perspective. All right, we've all done it at some point or another. Had a crowded, cluttered work desk. Ladders, a career advising company, did a survey with various HR teams in the U.S., and they mentioned the top 10 items on your desk that can make you look unprofessional. So listen up. Number one, a mountain of dishes and Tupperware. It could show a lack of time management and a lack of respect. Number two, a massive amount of sticky notes. It can create a visual insanity for those around you. Number three, suggestive pictures or calendars. If there's sexual in nature, they could be treated as harassment. Number four, an open purse. It could invite fraudulent behavior. Number five, using random items to lift your monitor. It's an eyesore and you're better off requesting a real lift from your manager. Number six, political paraphernalia. It could cause division in the workplace. Number seven, toys. Too many can make you seem immature or even that you aren't ready for the next level in your career. Number eight, scattered toiletries. It can make your desk look unsanitary. Number nine, cigarettes. Employees with a smoking habit could look unprofessional. Your colleagues may also be bothered by the smell. And finally, number 10, solo cups. Particularly the red ones are associated with alcohol and they can make you look immature and people may question if you've been drinking on the job. Never a good thing. Now it's time for our top 30 health roundup. A new study says that radio waves from certain types of cell phones could raise the risk of developing brain cancer. The study examined the effects of a radio frequency associated with an early generation of cell phone technology. This applies mainly to early era cell phone users, not as much to users of current models. Still, experts warn that even this small rise in cancer risk could have much wider implications, given that now billions of people use cell phones. Next, a study out of La Trobe University found that children with asthma who followed a healthy Mediterranean diet enriched with fatty fish had improved lung function over six months. The findings have added to a growing body of evidence that a healthy diet could be a potential therapy for childhood asthma. Lead researcher Maria Papamikael says fatty fish is high in omega-3 fatty acids, which have anti-inflammatory properties. Our study shows eating fish just twice a week can significantly significantly decrease lung inflammation in children with asthma. With asthma being the most common respiratory disease in young people, this could be a breakthrough. And finally, new findings out of Switzerland show patients with severe spinal cord injuries were able to regain the ability to walk by using targeted electrical stimulation and new rehabilitation protocols. Neurosurgeon Jocelyn Block explains the targeted stimulation must be as precise as a Swiss watch. In our method, we implant an array of electrodes over the spinal cord, which allows us to target individual muscle groups in the legs. Selected configurations of electrodes are activating specific regions of the spinal cord, mimicking the signals that the brain would deliver to produce walking. This latest study called STEMO potentially will provide a new framework for the treatment of spinal cord injuries. Stay with us, we have more Top 30 coming up. Welcome back. It's not your imagination. Your favorite fast food chains are now less busy after lunch. After years of flat or growing business, afternoon traffic last year fell at the likes of Dunkin' and Wendy's. With unemployment down, Americans are busier during the afternoon. They're also starting work earlier, shifting fast food's business to the morning. More working and shopping is also completed from home, giving diners little reason to step out for a coffee or muffin. And diners are looking for healthier options too, reaching for protein shakes, over the Starbucks fraps that used to attract post-lunch crowds. So what are chains doing to lure back afternoon traffic? This summer's select Starbucks changed afternoon music to create more of a bar vibe. They also tested seven afternoon-only drinks. And from 2 to 6 p.m., Dunkin' began serving $1.50 drinks and $2 snacks like donut fries, which are already one of their best-performing limited items. In today's hometown stories from Fox 46 Charlotte, with the growing number of opioid-related deaths in the U.S., a group of moms in Monroe, North Carolina, are trying to break the stigma around one of the best alternatives. You pop a pill and you're okay with it because your doctor signed this thing. And one of the side effects of suicide? We're a medicated society. 
We're just zombies. CBD is a non-psychoactive ingredient derived from the hemp plant and has proven to be a healthy and natural alternative to treating anything from aches and pains to depression and anxiety and even tumors. You will not get high, so it will not alter your state. You can still go to the soccer game, still cook dinner. Like, if anything, you'll be folding laundry and suddenly be like, oh, my back doesn't hurt anymore. Like, it's that, it's that, like, subliminal but effective. And in our final story from Fox 13 Tampa Bay, when Cole Eicher was just 12 years old, he spent a year battling brain cancer. Now 17 and in remission, he knows the struggles that come with fighting the disease. So he's taking what he learned in his fight to help others with theirs. Four years ago, he started the nonprofit Gold Together to help raise money for pediatric cancer patients. I really wanted to, you know, help the cause and, uh, just fight back against pediatric cancer. Through speaking engagements where he encourages others to give back, he's helped raise more than a million dollars for cancer research awareness and support. Well, here's a talker. Sharing some hobbies with your romantic partner seems like an easy recipe for success, right? But it turns out there's one particular common interest that can help make your relationship stronger. And Cody Goff, host of the Curiosity Daily Podcast, is here to tell us what it is. So, Cody, I hear you might not want to watch TV alone. That's right, Kristen. A recent study says that watching TV with your partner could be good for your relationship. A team of researchers quizzed 259 college students on the details of their relationships. They were all in long-term relationships, about 16 months on average. The couples with the strongest relationships were the ones that had a lot of friends in common and enjoyed a lot of the same media together. That part wasn't a big surprise. What was interesting is that sharing media had a much larger effect on couples who did not share a lot of friends. So if you and your bae don't run with the same group of friends, You'll probably bond a lot more closely if you both watch, say, Rick and Morty. Sharing a favorite TV show is so effective because it might actually be taking the place of a friendship with flesh and blood people. The good news is that even once that TV show ends and your fictional friends disappear, your real relationship might be stronger than ever. Kristen? Well, couples who binge TV shows together stay together, right? Thanks, Cody. You can check out more on Curiosity.com. Listen up, the shared workspace pioneer WeWork is now venturing into education. And it's not your typical math and science, think more like yoga and farming. WeGrow is run inside their New York City headquarters and they've labeled themselves a conscious entrepreneurial school. There's a Montessori approach in which children are given freedom to explore and choose activities based on their interests and creativity. Currently, they have 46 kids enrolled from kindergarten to fourth grade. They do learn math, science, social studies, and language arts, but they also start every morning with live music, yoga, and meditation. Tuition for the private school costs between thirty-six dollars and $42,000. That's four times more than the national average of private school tuition, which this year is $9,398. You know, adults are used to seeing advertising on our smartphones, right? But what about kids? 95% of commonly downloaded apps aimed at children ages five and younger contain at least one type of advertising. That's the finding of a recent report by the University of Michigan Medical School that included games as well as apps marketed as educational. The researchers were alarmed because previous research has shown kids younger than eight can't distinguish between content and advertising. The pop-up ads found in the study Study were often intrusive and interrupted the games. And some would have been tough for a child to close out of because of that tiny X to close the ad. Games even rewarded kids with points for watching advertising. One game called Dr. Kids reportedly had a character who cried when players leave the store within the app. Some of the ads also weren't age appropriate. The researchers allege some of the games violate rules within the Federal Trade Commission Act, which bans deceptive marketing. The study's authors have asked the Federal Trade Commission to investigate. Stay with us. We have more things you need to know coming right up. Now, I'm most certainly not a chef, but I do know a good pizza when I taste one. And we all know sometimes it just doesn't taste the same when you make it at home. Now, two Italian physicists teamed up with a food anthropologist to release the secret equation to the perfect pizza recipe. Andre Varlamov, Andreas Glatz, and Sergio Grasso say the difference is thermodynamics. It's preferable to have a wood-fired brick oven, since the wood fire radiates heat up the walls and on the stone floor to make for an evenly baked 
pie. In fact, under these thermodynamic conditions, you could actually be eating your pie in about two minutes with a brick oven heated to 625 degrees. The dry heat and smell of wood make for the ideal way to bake the perfect pizza. But since most of us have electric ovens, the secret for us is turning the heat to 450 degrees Fahrenheit for 170 seconds. Yep, it's that simple. All right, companies buying ads on Google reportedly have a new way to see if they're working, but it's controversial. Bloomberg reports that Google spent millions of dollars to buy transaction information from MasterCard. That information could be used to track what users are buying in stores to see if they might have been influenced by ads they saw online. Bloomberg reports that MasterCard never announced the deal to any of its roughly 2 billion users. That has privacy advocates concerned. A lawyer with the Electronic Privacy Information Center said there's not enough responsibility being taken by companies to inform users what they're doing and what rights they have. Both Google and MasterCard say that no identifying information was used. A Google spokesperson said, we do not have access to any personal information from our partners, credit and debit cards. Google says users can opt out of being tracked under the web and app activity menu. Now let's go to our friends at Popstar Magazine. They've rounded up 2018's Best in Pop Culture. And Elizabeth Stanton from Popstar is here with the details. Hey, Liz. Yes, Kristen, everyone here at Popstar took a look back at the past year, and we've put together some lists full of the very best of 2018. We'll kick it off with a family favorite, television. We've got drama, comedy, action, and a lot of glow. Yes, Netflix's Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling made our list, along with Pose, The Good Place, Black Lightning, Maniac, and The Handmaid's Tale. We saw some remarkable movies take the screen this year, and our top picks were Black Panther, Love, Simon, A Star is Born, A Quiet Place, and Crazy Rich Asians. In music, Shawn Mendes delivered the self-titled Shawn Mendes, and music's power couple Beyonce and Jay-Z dropped their joint endeavor, Everything is Love. Finally, celebrity stunners. Emma Stone, Zendaya, Michael B. Jordan, and a reigning royal, Meghan Markle. For the complete list, check out Popstar Magazine's current issue on Stands Now. Happy New Year, Kristen. Back to you. Thanks, Liz. Happy New Year to you, too. All right, now to a fun fact. The average employee spends eight hours a week in meetings, and no surprise, nearly 60% report feeling disengaged because of them. Well, now in a recent Wall Street Journal column, Harvard Business School professor Francesca Gino may have found a solution, improv. According to Gino, the comedy club staple popularized by the likes of Tina Fey and Amy Poehler may ensure new ideas are heard and that time isn't wasted. Gino suggests meetings begin with a warm-up exercise, as simple as everyone sharing their weekend plans to get all involved and at ease. Improv has no script, so comedians must listen and respond to what's actually said. Bosses can do the same, not only listening to employees' words, but the emotion behind them. Even more, bosses and coworkers can encourage creativity through plussing. Rather than contradicting or discouraging new ideas with a no or but, building upon them with a yes and to keep things moving. Well, most people stress about money in one way or another, right? But you might be surprised to hear that people's biggest financial fears have nothing to do with the unpredictable stock market. A new study by WalletHub revealed nearly one quarter of Americans, 23%, say they don't have enough money in their savings should an emergency pop up, and that's what keeps them up at night. Another 22% worry because they don't have enough save for retirement, and 20% hold the very real fear that they will fall victim to some sort of fraud. Nearly one in five worry about losing their job, and 9% say they're worried about losing their health insurance. And there are 7% who admit their poor credit score stresses them out. Basically, there's always something to stress about when it comes to money. But thank goodness the country's unemployment rate is at a 50-year low. Glass half full, and we'll be right back. Welcome back. One library has a novel approach to get readers excited about classic literature without picking up a book. The New York Public Library has begun turning classic novels into Instagram stories. Their first installment is Lewis Carroll's Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. The posts feature animation and artwork by the illustrator Magos, as well as the full text of the book. Soon the library will add The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, illustrated by the designer Buck. The Metamorphosis by Franz Kafka will be illustrated by Cesar Pelizer. The library partnered with the creative agency Mother on the project, 
Readers tap the corner of their screen to turn the page, much like a paper book. The library says Insta novels are a way to show readers they've changed with the times. One employee told the Wall Street Journal, we want people to understand that libraries aren't just those brick and mortar places full of dusty books. It's also an effort to make books more accessible, especially for young readers. Readers can find the novels in the highlights section of the NYPL Instagram. It is definitely the technology age. And that's it for today's show. Thanks for watching. You can catch up on past episodes of Top 30 now on Hulu. You can also download the Top 30 mobile app and visit our website. We want to hear from you, so connect with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Like, follow, and subscribe to at Top 30 TV for interviews and exclusive web content. We'll see you next time on Top 30.